Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride, back again with another video. And in today's video, I'm very excited to be sharing with you my setup for December 2019, the final month of 2019, which in the most cliche move ever, I'm going to take a moment to recognize how ridiculous it is that we're already heading into December. I don't know where 2019 went. Like this video if you are also feeling thankful that you just made it to December 2019. We can get through this and January 2020 is just around the corner and I for one am excited to get to live through the Roaring Twenties because I'm pretty disappointed I missed it the first time around. This video is kindly sponsored by Skillshare and I'll tell you a little bit more about them at the end of the video along with showing you some sneak peeks of the most recent class I took on Skillshare. So grab your bujo, grab a pen, maybe grab a cup of coffee or tea and come plan with me. So this December setup is quite watercolor heavy. I wanted to do a couple sort of standalone watercolor paintings for this setup, mostly just because I felt I needed to give myself some time to just sit and paint and try to relax. I've been feeling stressed lately, so I thought I would benefit from just taking time to paint because painting is a very self-soothing thing for me. It is one of my favorite forms of self-care. So I decided to do a few watercolor paintings for this setup. If you're not interested in watercolors, I'll put a timestamp in my pinned comment at the top of the comment section down below. So you can skip to the part of the video where I put the paintings into my bujo and set up the spreads. But if you, like me, really enjoy watching time lapses of watercolors, stick around because I have a few different paintings I'm doing for this video. I'm starting off with the cover page and I saw a few different versions of this idea of painting a scene in the general shape of a crescent moon and I thought it looked really beautiful and I think it lends itself very well to the theme that I'm going for this month which is sort of a cozy cabin in a snow-capped tree forest in the middle of the Canadian wilderness in the height of winter. A little wordy for a theme, but descriptive. As I often do, I asked my patrons, my lovely plant-based pride patron squad, to vote for the theme they wanted to see from me. And snow-capped trees and cozy cabin were in the top three. So I decided to combine those ideas together to create this theme. So I want this one to feature the cabin and some of the trees, and then a beautiful night sky with lots of stars. So I'm using my little mini Winsor & Newton watercolor palette. This is a cute little travel palette with a watercolor brush pen and it really has every color you need because you can mix these colors together to get literally any color and shade in the rainbow. I do, however, have a couple tubes of Winsor & Newton Cotman paints just for those times when I have a larger surface area to fill or I want a more saturated or darker color. Because paints out of the tube are going to be more saturated, you need less water to be able to paint with them. So I'm primarily using Payne's Gray mixed with Ultramarine to create the sky. The cabin itself is just straight raw umber, but for the trees, I'm actually mixing together a brighter green from my palette with raw umber, which is a brown, to create more of an olivey green that I think looks a little bit more realistic to the kinds of greens you'd see in nature. They're a little more desaturated. I'm also mixing this olive green that I've created with some Payne's Gray to make an even darker olive green that I'm gonna use for the shadows on the trees and some of the darker trees for variety throughout. I'm adding white wash to my brush with quite a bit of water and flicking it over the page to get a random assortment of stars through the sky and also using my white gouache to add snow to the trees and snow along the ground in front of the cabin. I'm also using yellow for my palette to add a soft glow from the windows and the door so that the cabin looks super cozy. By the way, if you're interested in a video where I show these paintings a little closer to real time and talk through what I'm doing in more detail, please let me know in the comments down below. I generally try to just give an overview and go by quite quickly, but I'm happy to make more thorough videos talking about what exactly I'm doing and techniques I've picked up over time and little tips and tricks and 
my thought process behind why I'm doing certain things in a certain order. If you're interested in that, leave a comment down below because I don't want to bore you by going too in depth if you already know all these things and you just want to get some inspiration or ideas for paintings you could do for your own bullet journal. And of course, if you're not interested in recreating these paintings, but you would still love to have them in your bullet journal, my patrons at the $1 level get one printable every month, typically the cover page with and without any lettering. And my $3 patrons will be getting every painting I do for this setup as a high res file to print out and use in their bullet journal. So if you're interested in that, check out the link in my description box to join the plant-based bride patrons squad. So the second painting I'm working on is going to be for my monthly spread and I saw a picture actually that someone had taken it was posted on Pinterest but someone had taken a photograph from the perspective of standing in a clearing and had taken a photo up at the sky and you could see the trees kind of encroaching on the frame from all sides and I just thought it looked really beautiful it had almost a mystical quality to it with sunbeams kind of coming down and I wanted to create this kind of an idea for my monthly spread with enough space in the center to be able to draw out my monthly calendar. So for this one, because you would be standing on the ground and looking up at the trees and the light is coming from above, so the section of the trees you're seeing are sort of in shadow because they're the underneath sections of the trees. I wanted the trees to be quite dark, so just to look like they're in shadow. So I essentially only used Payne's Gray to create all of these trees. I started by creating a very washed out light blue base to have a little bit of color behind the sky. It's barely perceptible. I then added my trees around the periphery of the painting using my Payne's Gray. What Chewy? I'm trying to film a voiceover. Do you mind? <laughs> and then I used my white gouache to create these sunbeams coming down. This is a really simple concept for a painting and actually pretty quick to do, but I really, really love the effect. The last painting I'm working on is going to be for my quote page this month. And I wanted this one to feature the same cabin from a different perspective. And I wanted this one to look like it was a little later in the night, a little darker. Again, using my ultramarine and Payne's Gray to create a slightly ombre effect in the sky. and then used my Payne's Gray to make the trees. Again, I wanted this to look like it was maybe the middle of the night. So I wanted those trees to be quite dark. And then using raw umber again for the brown of the cabin, this time looking at it face on, and used my white gouache to add stars to the sky and snow to the branches of the trees, as well as snow on the roof and snow across the ground. I ended up deciding I not only wanted stars, but I wanted it to look like it was currently snowing. So I ended up flicking white gouache all over the painting, including the lower portion in front of the cabin and the trees. So it looks like it's a heavy, fluffy snow snowfall in the middle of the night. I also added some washed out gouache, so quite thin, quite watery, coming up out of the chimney to look like there's smoke sort of slowly wafting out from a fireplace. And of course, I had to add a glowy yellow doorway to make the cabin look warm and inviting. I'm gonna pop up on the screen some of your recreations from the last month. Thank you as always for tagging me in your recreations. It is so cool for me to see how you are interpreting my themes or spreads in your own bullet journal. And I love to share them in my stories and in my plan with me videos.
Once all these paintings were done, I let them completely dry and then I scanned them into my computer. Did a couple quick edits in Photoshop just to make sure that they were as vibrant and saturated as they are in real life. And then I printed them out. If you're ever interested in a video where I show how I scan and edit paintings, let me know. I can make a video on that in the future. So starting with my cover page, I printed this painting on matte clear sticker paper because I didn't want to have to cut out this painting and deal with the finicky edges of the trees and try to keep the lines super straight. I just wanted to be able to stick it in and be done with it. So I used a matte sticker sheet for this. I will link down below the specific matte sticker paper as with all of the supplies I'm using in this video. And then I'm adding December here, relatively simple and straightforward. Moving on to my calendar spread, I actually printed this painting out on regular printer paper because I thought that would be the easiest and cheapest option. I'm cutting it to generally fit the size of the paper, though I will end up going in after I glue it down to specifically cut to the edges to make sure that they fit perfectly. And I took some time to do some measurements and use my pencil to lay out the calendar. Since this page doesn't have dots or lines or grids or anything, I wanted to make sure that I was going to be creating something that was for the most part proportional and clean and straight lines. Once I had a good base with pencil, I went in with my Secura Micron to draw in all of the lines of the calendar. And I thought it would look nice to add the days of the month with a very, very light Tombow brush pen, and then used a darker gray Tombow to add the days of the week along the top, and then recreated that same lettering for December at the bottom and just added 2019. Once I was all done, I just glued it in and trimmed the edges to fit the shape of the paper. Now moving on to the quote page, I typically would use this page opposite my monthly to do some trackers, but for the month of December, I decided to skip the monthly trackers. If there's anything I end up wanting to track, I'm just gonna track it in my weekly running task lists because December is going to be a very busy month for me and I'm hopefully going to be able to take at least a full week off work at some point in there, probably around Christmas. So I just didn't want to have to worry about it. So I'm skipping the trackers this month. Again, I just printed this one on regular printer paper and then I'm adding my quote, which is, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Moving on to the final spread of this video, which is my weekly spread. I'm just going to set up one as I typically do in these videos. As per always, I'm using my rolling weekly layout. I actually just made an updated video going really into depth on how the rolling weekly works. So tap the link in the card there, or I'll also put a link in the description box if you want to watch that video and get a really thorough rundown on why I use this spread and how it works. But this one's a pretty simple setup. I actually made a mistake on my days of the week. For some reason, I skipped a day there. So I decided to cover up my mistake with black circles and add the days of the week on top with my white gel pen. This is one of the easiest fixes I mentioned in my how to fix mistakes in your Bujo video. I will link that in the cards and in the description box if you haven't seen it. But this is probably one of my most used fixes when I make little mistakes like this. I also added just a few little trees there just to tie in the theme from the rest of the setup. As I said, my December is going to be very busy, so I didn't want to fill my weekly with a lot of extra stuff that would take up too much room because I really need my weeklies to be super productive, at least for the first couple weeks of December, so I can stay on track and get everything done that I have planned. Before I show you the final flip through of the setup, I wanna to talk to you really quickly about today's sponsor, Skillshare. If you've spent any time on this channel, you will know that I love Skillshare. I love working with them. Skillshare is an online learning community and they have thousands of classes covering pretty much 
every creative and entrepreneurial skill you could want to learn about. Skillshare is super affordable. You can get a premium membership for less than $10 a month if you go with the annual plan. Whether you're trying to tap into your creativity for a hobby or you're trying to build your career, Skillshare really has your back. I have learned so many things on Skillshare that I utilize every single day in my career as an online content creator. This is the current class I'm taking, getting to know your paint. This is a really in-depth class and Dylan has so many tips and tricks to share about different types of paper, different types of paints and brushes to get different effects, different techniques. But I think the most interesting and unique thing that I learned from this course was about color mixing and color swatching. Dylan had some really interesting things to share about how she specifically creates her color swatches so that she can recreate a very specific shade consistently over time and also creating color palettes that appeal to her specific aesthetic or a specific feel she's going for with a painting. Because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can sign up with the link in my description box to get a two month free trial of Skillshare Premium. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And now let's look at the final flip through of my December setup. So here it is, short and sweet. I'm really happy with how this setup turned out. I really enjoyed creating these watercolor paintings and I can't wait to see my patrons using them in their bullet journals. Which reminds me, it's time to thank my plant-based bride patron squad for their support. Y'all are the best. Extra special thanks to our newest patron, Katrin. Welcome to the squad. We are so excited to have you. If you at home are interested in joining the squad, if you're interested in getting the printables of the paintings from this video, feel free to tap the link in the card or in the description box. We have a really cool community that we're building over there on Patreon, and I would love to get to know you better. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for yet another monthly plan with me video. These are my absolute favorite videos to make in the entire world. And it means a lot to me that y'all hang out with me for these videos, that y'all put in your own time and effort to recreate some of the spreads and themes that I create. It's just a really special, awesome experience all around. So thank you for being such a huge part of making the experience so great for me. Y'all are an amazing audience and I just really, really appreciate your support. Whether you're a patron or if you're a subscriber who likes my videos, comments, it means so, so much to me. So thank you. Thank you so, so much. And I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye friends.